Hello everybody and welcome back to the second part of the fluid simulation um, uh, training training bit. Uh, if you're watching the last video, I began and went through the process of simulating this uh, video. And in this video we're going to talk about um, meshing it, okay? So we talked about simulating this, simulating the form. So if you didn't watch that, you can pick that up. It's the last video. Okay, so we've gone through that. We've gone through the basics. Now in this video, what we're going to look at is uh, meshing and exporting. Actually, more of the meshing and exporting as already explained in the previous video. It's in an earlier video. It's pretty much the same process, but we'll be going in depth into using the VDB tools uh, to mesh uh, this liquid and the particles. Actually, we're not going to use VDB, but we're going to export the particles as well as a mesh, but not using VDBs. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so, this is how the mesh looks like once it's been meshed. After the fluid simulation is run, uh, we will get something like this. Okay. Um, this is a higher, a lower resolution, just a quick example of what you might get compared to the final one. Okay, okay, so to do this is, uh, I don't know, uh, there's two ways to mesh in uh, Deep Rising, or Deep Studio FX, okay. So there's an easy way using the particle mesh, so you don't have to worry about VDB. It still uses VDB, but it's a quicker way to mesh. So let me just plug this in. So it's quick. So all you have to do is specify the grid size, particle size, and then you've got your uh, uh, filters coming in. So you can filter stuff directly, but uh, workflow is a bit different. You fill them in from the back, and you've got the, the feedback there. And VDB, anyway, there's a few particles. It's pretty fast. You can scrub through this in the viewport. It doesn't take too long. It's real time. But once you reach a certain level, you will probably have to bake this out to disk. It won't be as responsive, but there's no few particles here. VDB does a good job of that. And the more filters you add, the slower it gets. Okay, so that's using the particle measure. But for this, I wanted full control, so I actually ditched. I didn't use this, but this is pretty good. It's pretty fast to preview, or even the final, actually, depending on what you want. Uh, it's same result, actually. It's just different workflows. So this is uh, doesn't expose the smaller parts, just exposes the meshing and the VDB. It's a shorter workflow, quicker. Okay, but this with this one you've got more control. So um, just plug that in. Of course, yeah, I haven't tuned it to look like the other one, but it's also quite responsive. And I've included a filter in this one actually. So, as you can see, I can scrub through it to get real-time preview for a very high resolution anyway. It's very high there. So, but um, uh, this is the one I used for the final one. Let me just rotate this. So this actually is like a few million polys here. So it's a bit uh, uh, slow. Anyway, I'll show you uh, the workflow, the node graph for this straightforward it's not as complex as actually simulating okay so w what we do is pretty much we just load the cache uh, i think i demonstrated this in a very earlier video just go to file and uh, import particle cache you get your particle cache from the last one so it's off here i've switched it off because this is a quite uh, this is, it's meshing 300,000 particles and i've got a whole bunch of filters and then I am subtracting from the cylinder, so it takes quite a bit of time. It's not no, it's not as interactive as the demo I just showed you. Okay, so we're using the, as I was explaining earlier, we're using the, hmm, where was I? the full workflow. So what we're doing is using the VDB nodes. So if you go to nodes, the quick uh, the quick way to mesh is under point meshing, and then the open VDB nodes have the more uh, the detailed way to do it. <coughs> so the first thing you add is a point to volume. And then after that, once you have a volume, you can pass it down the VDB 
nodes and here I've just added one filter nothing complicated then I've converted it back to a mesh and I'm just previewing it so the workflow is roughly the same there but I've done a few things so the particles remember they were they weren't clean I've cleaned them again here I could always catch this out but you know it's better to be dynamic so I just clean them again VDB to points we've got our VDB our volume then we dilate it so dilating uh, can I I, sh uh, I will show this I guess if you're not uh, familiar with VDB all dilating does is add extra layer to the particles and to your volume uh, shall I say not particles to the VDB volume so dilate a raw view of dilate so for example let's not do that let's just do this directly you see these big particles so this is just the particles of the um, uh, of the mesh so this is the particle size let me just uh, do this point they need so the uh, voxel size must always be smaller than the or at least half the size of the actual uh, mesh so I've just dropped the size mm, so you can see the particles clearer like I'm gonna drop them again actually this is not uh, the best example of four and uh, two over here so we get okay so now we can actually see the spheres um, in the viewport one second okay um so i'll plug that into dilate and then i will uh, just put that directly into the oh, sorry into the vdb to volume mesh and then we see what happens to take a few of course it's for filtering takes longer as you can see now it looks like the diameter of the particles have increased but they haven't what's actually happening is that the extra layer has been in, uh, included around the uh, the node okay so there's two modes for this there's dilate to increase the size and dilate to erode now the trick here is if a particle whatever the mesh or the volume doesn't really have a thick layer if you erode it it's just going to disappear so the whole point of adding the extra layer is so that you can add extra effects on it like filters so if i go to this i add the filter here uh, i'm using a medium filter to smooth it uh, i'm going to plug this into there take a moment then it's going to smooth it see so at that level that layer is too at least uh let's still got that extra layer but it's too very thick now the trick here is to get the nice look is to erode it let me just add another dilate node. And then, sorry, I'm just going to switch the modes here to erode. And oh, the erode, just make sure so the value we're eroding just has to be, can't erode the whole surface, okay? So the filters actually erode to a certain degree, we still have to be careful of that. Oh, sorry, 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 no. <laughs> My fault, I made a mistake, sorry. This should go there. And then that should go there, and that should go there. Okay, like that. So, uh, yeah, so uh, we rolled it again. As you can see now, okay, we've got something that looks uh, closer to fluids. So that's what eroding and filtering does. So most mainly, most of the filters are just uh, smoothing filters. They smooth, they smooth the surface uh, in a certain way. Maybe it's more square, or maybe it's very smooth like a Gaussian filter, or it smooths at a certain angle. So that's the main difference, okay, uh, with the filters there. So you can get different effects if you combine the filters as well. So it's up to sculpting what you want for the final product using those tools. But then there's an extra bit here so to get uh since i'm simulating inside a box whatever depending on the resolution if you want to be really careful 
what you should do is uh, actually add the collision object to the to the scene and use that as a intersection object to cut the fluid properly. So what I did is added the cylinder to the volume to mesh. Uh, and then I used the boolean node. So this uh, not showing here, but I added a boolean node, and I in intersection mode I got the liquid so when they intersect the part that's the intersect form will disappear so it's sampling the inside of the volume okay so VDBs will sample the volume not the like the surface for like the voxelizer for example and so when, where it intersects it will not it will get rid of those bits okay only parts that are intersecting will actually show up for example okay um, then VDB volume and out and then I just uh, usual is the uh, Alembic cache, but uh, since the last video, this is version 0.21, so you have to get this. Uh, it's been actually improved. There's a small bug before that's been cleared out, and now you can actually specify the VDB frames per second and the start frame, which is important uh, for Blender since you can adjust these. So you can adjust it, and if you've got two sequences, which I had, for example, foam and this, you can play around with these two. Okay, so one second, and then. We can talk about foam. Foam is very simple, actually. Um, it's just a, it's actually a small trick. All I did was uh, use I copies copies of spheres. So I created a sphere from here. I scaled it to the size I wanted it to. Then I just um, copied it to every point in the copy, whatever. So um, I'm using the positions of the cache for example, into the copy mesh and the spheres, and then I'm scaling the spheres again to the desired size, okay? And then I'm merging the object. So copy meshes will uh, create individual meshes or proxy meshes, and then we need an object measure to combine everything into a single mesh, okay? So, uh, sorry for the noise, the people making noise, anyway, moving on. After that, uh, that's about it pretty much. Then you can just catch that out to a normal limbic uh, frame. And the important part is to use a merge node, otherwise this will not work, okay? Uh, it's very important to combine all your meshes into a single mesh before uh, exporting them to your limbic cache. Because, like I said, this generates a proxy mesh for each object. There. So each, in, pretty much what that means is the proxy is just that each individual object will have its own transform. What the merge does is combine everything plus the transformations into one single uh, merger. If you want to know why it's done like that, it's mainly because physics for things. You can feed this into a bullet simulation. That each object is an individual. If it was one mesh already, it would be a mess. So it's easier to you know uh, decant it than put it together, and we've got everything um, there. Um, yes, okay, uh, that's about it. Yeah, uh, oh, then I can show you the blender part, I guess, just to importing the stuff, uh, how the scene was set up. So, once I got that in, I did a little bit of modeling for the final, as you can see, the extra, just for aesthetic nature. Um, nothing too complicated. Um, so I guess we can just go to the camera, active camera, of course if we click a place, it'll take a few moments as you can see this, the mesh is a few million, it's like one million triangles, when it's settled it gets to two at some point I think, so, well it's pretty fast, it's very fast, Blender handles it pretty quickly, you can go to rendered mode just to see the final one. Uh, so I'm using two separate caches for this, one for the fluid and one for the actual particles. I don't think uh, it's a different project, I think, so one second. Particles won't show in this one, but yeah. Uh, the setup's pretty simple as well. The lighting setup is just GI and, you know, I used... Uh, some poly meshes to light the scene, and that's about it. And some textures, metals, if you're interested in that, that's about it. 
yeah, so it works pretty straightforward, actually. And that's about it. And yeah, yeah, so if you've got questions, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. There'll be more of these videos in the future. Download the product, support us. There's lots more to come. We want to know what you want. Yes, that's about it. So uh, we'll probably make another video again for fluids to cap it off, I guess. Uh, in the next one, we'll do something simpler like a product shot just to show that it's not just for, you know, for these types of effects. We'll do something simpler and more calmer. Uh, and we will probably incorporate the bullet dynamics so you can see fluids interacting. You don't have to keyframe anything, it's automatic. We'll probably do that. Uh, we'll recreate one of our old scenes probably in Deep Effects just to demonstrate that. Okay, um, that's about it. Thank you for watching. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.